They become a member of the collective. It's Soviet education, basically. Those were, might as well say it. It's Soviet education. You cannot expect to have a smoothly running world socialist system if you have people out there who are going to object to what you're trying to do. So you have to brainwash. If you uh, sat around a table and you said, right, what we need to do is we need to find some way of getting young people to see the world where the way we want them to see it. Mm -hmm. So that by the time they become adults, they are completely um, following the reality we want them to believe in. Someone might say, well, they might not have it like, but you know the ideal thing? What we do is we have a system where we take children away from their parents at least five days a week, all day, from about the age of four and five, and we have control of their minds until they're about 17, 18. That would be ideal. Well, of course, that's what happens. Yeah. It's called the education system. Yes. And it's indoctrination. Schooling is a form of adoption. You give your kid away to a group of strangers. You accept a promise, sometimes stated and more often implied, that the state, to its agents, knows better how to raise your children and educate them than you, your neighbors, your grandparents, your, 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 your local traditions do. And that your kid will be better off so adopted. By the time the child returns to the family or has the option of doing that, very few want to. Their parents are some form of friendly stranger too, and why not? In the key hours of growing up, strangers have reared the kid. Now let's look at the strangers, of which you were one and I was one. Regardless of our good feeling toward children, regardless of our individual talents or intelligence, we have so little time each day with each of these kids, we can't possibly know enough vital information about that particular kid to tailor a set of exercises to that kid. So what we do is accept, and of course if we don't accept this, we're fired or harassed, we accept a state's prescription that's written in manuals. You do this first and this second and this third, and the way the state checks on whether you've followed that diet is there's standardized tests given at intervals. If your kids do badly, it does not mean that they're bad readers or anything else. It means that they haven't been obedient to the drills the state set down, and they're marked for further treatment later on, or they're marked to be excluded from responsible jobs. Perhaps some ways by being excluded from the colleges that lead to responsible jobs, in other ways from the licenses that lead to responsible jobs. This was all worked out. It didn't evolve by a lot of rational people saying, we'll take this, this, and this from the past, then the next generation will take this, this, and this. This was set down largely in a handful of places. I think it's important to understand that most of the educational programs that are implemented in the United States stem from the National Education uh, Association. And the NEA was actually founded by uh, John D. Rockefeller. And John D. Rockefeller, I think, voiced the uh, beliefs of this ruling elite that wants to try to homogenize our education system when he was quoted as saying, I don't want a nation of thinkers, I want a nation of workers. So I think the education system is not only pushing people into a socialized uh, version of government, but also uh, dumbing the individual down to the point to where he, he'll be a good worker in the factory or he'll be a good worker at, uh, in Silicon Valley. He may know a lot about computers, uh, but he is not going to have a classic education that would allow him to take all of the facets of 
the culture and the society and put it together and really form an intelligent opinion as to what's really going on and what might be in the best interest of the individual. Now let's shift to your, the basis of your question, which is Rockefeller and Carnegie and, and uh, J.P. Morgan. These people saw a different kind of utopia. They saw that this material abundance, since they had, they had abandoned a belief in uh, uh, a creator or, or an afterlife, this material abundance was the best that a human life could aim for. And to do that, the family had to be moved off center stage, and the children had to be processed like raw materials. These are the people who saw to it with their influence that when legislation that was wildly radical based on, on any past model was proposed that the right legislators would vote that legislation through. They saw to it that money was available to build these vast piles of brick and stone and to drain children out of the community by the force of law, mind you, because they don't teach the way children learn, nor can they teach the way children learn. That's not what they're set up to do. They're set up to produce a predictable, homogenous, safe product. They're set up to sort people into occupational categories roughly uh, consonant with what uh, the current economy demands. The whole system, because we, 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 we have two hemispheres of the brain, the left brain, which is about words and this world reality and, you know, the, the, the perception of this reality. We have the right brain, which is where you get creativity, inspiration and uh, connection. And then you've got this corpus colossum, which connects the two. Mm -hmm. Um, first of all, um, we use a fraction of our brains. Why is that? Um, and the other thing is that what the system does is it turns out left brain prisoners. They run the system. Mm -hmm. And it does it by putting information through schools and colleges and universities into the left brain, which it then says at a uh, time of an exam, give me all that back. And if you if you tell me what I've told you well enough to believe, then you'll uh, pass the exam and you'll be very successful. Mm -hmm. um, any, anyone that takes that information into the right brain and puts their, their spin on it or questions it or sees through it and, man, and puts that in the exam, um, they are um, perceived as a, a disruptive influence in the classroom. Yes, yes they are. And, and so um, what happens is for you to become a doctor, overwhelmingly a politician, mm -hmm. a journalist, someone uh, often in um, industry, all these areas um, that uh, control the system. The professions. The professions. Yes. Lawyers. Yes. I mean, on and on we go. You have to have gone through your young life constantly taking information into your left brain and regurgitating it out on exam papers. Um, to become a teacher, you have to go through that process. Then you go through teacher training college where you're, you're taught how to do it to others and then you let loose on the children. Yes. The whole system um, is run by left brain prisoners. And if you look at the school system, things like music and art that stimulate this side of the brain, the uniqueness, they are constantly cut back um, in, in favor of, 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 of left brain uh, curriculums. Mm. Um, and this is systematic. I have to get this over to people. This is not systematic.